Good morning, beloveds. It is May 13th. Um, and it is Friday. So it is Friday the 13th. And I know a lot of people have a lot of weirdness around Friday the 13th. And a certain series of horror movies didn't help. I was listening to some radio personalities this morning talk about Friday the 13th and the 13 disciples and it going back to that. But um, I'm married to a history major. And according to him, uh, Friday the 13th actually goes back to the destruction of the Templars. Uh, whatever that king was. And it was, I believe it was one of the uh, Louis in France had dis decided that the um, Templars had gotten too powerful. Well, I think the Pope actually decided and he, he conspired with a king um, since he needed an army. Uh, he had decided that the Templars had gotten too rich and too powerful and he needed to take them down. And so they sent letters across to the, um, where all the Templars were across Europe and they were to be opened and the orders executed in the letters. And it happened to have happened on Friday the 13th and a whole lot of Templars were murdered. So that is why that is so, that why Friday the 13th is so unlucky. Uh, because it is thanks to the Templars that we actually have the modern banking system that we do. Uh, they created a system where pilgrims could deposit money at one way station and they would get a chit, uh, a writ, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then the Templars would, they, they, the Templars would escort them uh, because the Templars were very involved in pilgrimage, pilgrimages, so that the, the Templars would want hold their money and give them the writ. And then they also managed the, the, um, the pilgrimage lanes, I guess, routes. Um, and so when you got to the next way station, if you needed money, then you could cash in your writ or your chit and either for all of it or some of it or whatever, and get, you know, and get your money back and get a new writ. And so that, is where the modern banking system came from. And because that that's where some of their money, oh, probably a whole lot of their money came from, and the Pope and a king got jealous. So there's your history on Friday the 13th. Okay. So it is May 13th. Uh, and the, the title is No Power Opposed to, to God. And our first quote is, behold, I will bring it to health and cure, and I will cure them and will reveal unto them abundance of peace and truth. And that is Jeremiah 33, 6. Uh, healing and demonstration take place as our minds become attuned to the truth of being. And that is the science of mind, page 57. And because this is Craig Carter, we have a third one. Uh, there is nothing opposed to God. There is nothing opposed to its good. And that is good for you, page 93. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Okay. The art of spiritual mind treatment rests chiefly upon the use of affirmative statements. But implied in a strong affirmation is an equally strong negation of its opposite. This, in spiritual treatment, we begin with the recognition of spirit, God, or truth as the only reality. And we remember that we are one with that truth. We then make our spiritual treatment specific by the use of affirmations, which leads to a personal realization of heal, the healing we seek or of the objective we have in mind. Spiritual treatments should not be seen as an endeavor to overcome something, but rather as accepting of a good which is already ours in divine mind. Therefore, this stage of our treatment, at this stage of our treatment, a good thing to recognize is that there is no power opposed to God. We must entertain no subconscious doubts as we accept our good. We must know that nothing opposes it. Such denials are especially effective when treating pain or fear, and these emotions are often coupled. When 
an immediate declaration that there is no pain in the kingdom of God will allow the wholeness of God to express without the blockage of fear. And when fear arises, as in the case of an impending confrontation, confrontation, we need to declare God is here and nothing can harm me. There is no delay in divine right action. There is no obstruction in divine mind. The answer to my need is right here, right now. I accept it, I believe it, and I proclaim it. God's healing force within me is doing its perfect work and every cell of my body responds. I am not afraid. The positive love of God fills me with light. In this light, I am secure and no harm can approach me. Divine mind knows what I need and the divine law brings it about. Whenever I must, wherever I must go today, God gets there first. I am guided, guarded, and love, loved. And I release this treatment with acceptance and thanksgiving. Okay, so that's Craig Carter. Um, well, it's kind of a, I'm, I'm going to use, I was going to say heavy, but it's not really heavy. It's just thick. <laughs> it's a thick topic. Um, cause there's a lot in it. There's a lot, there's a lot in this short paragraph. Let's start with the fact that there's no, there's no, no power opposed to, to God. Um, because we do not believe in duality. We believe in oneness. Uh, we do not believe that evil is a power in and of itself. We believe it, that it is a misuse of the law, which means that there is nothing, no entity, no power, no personality that is pulling in the opposite direction of the good of God. Um, all of that is simply misuse. It's like, there's one power and it is the use we make of it that makes it good or evil, which is ironically Shakespeare. <laughs> it's, there is, it's a thing is not good or evil. It's thinking that makes it so. So, um, we believe in the power of good. We do not believe in the power of evil. What we believe is that evil is a misuse of the good. So it's not a power in and of itself. So one of the greatest fears is, and I, and I see it a lot, um, is, you know, where they say not today, Satan, uh, where they believe that there is a power that is tempting them. Why would you want to believe that there is a power out there that is ultimately, you know, to bring about the downfall. Nature doesn't have that. People do. Okay. And that's the interesting thing. When you look at nature, you know, um, outside of where nature has interacted with man and we've made things psychotic, uh, man, I should say humankind. Um, there's no true evil in the natural world. There are things that happen that are not preferred, but you know, that's the cycle of life. Uh, but we are fully capable of taking the power that is invested in us and misusing it. So I think that's one of those things that when I came into science of mind, I had never, I, I just had a hard time dealing with the devil. I just, I was like, this does not make sense. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get it. Cause even when you look at, when you read the Bible, um, and there's two or three different, you, you have references to the devil, you have references to Satan, you have references to Lucifer, um, which may be three different entities. Because when I read Satan, it sounded like an office. It sounded like a prosecutor actually. Um, and then Lucifer is an angel that got ticked off. So it's still, it was still a power of good that was misused. Um, so there is no equal and opposite to God. There is no opposite to God. There is only God. And that went a long way to, because I wasn't afraid, but it, it, it went a long way to going, okay, 
This makes more sense to me. Um, now, uh, in here, he makes an excellent point about uh, fear and pain being coupled. And since I am dealing with chronic pain, I find it interesting and heartening, uh, if that's a word, um, his, his prescription for pain is to, is, is to say that there is no pain in the kingdom of God. I may be experiencing pain, but there is no pain in God. God doesn't experience pain. And so therefore I have a place to go where pain is not experienced. So I can, so, you know, that's where I need to go. And then when I go there, then I fill up with that, whatever that is, um, and bring that back into the material reality where I am experiencing the chronic pain. And it, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I like that idea. And so it's, it's definitely something that I, that, that I'm going to incorporate into, uh, my, my, my work right now, um, so that I can figure out what's going on. Okay. So since this one's such a thick one, I'm just going to go back through it. Okay. Uh, no power opposed to God. Behold, I will bring it health and cure and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And it, it, it's, I'm, I'm going to reveal an abundance of peace and truth because truth is what we're always looking for. Uh, remember that Jeremiah is one of the exile prophets. Uh, so that's Jeremiah 3, 33, 6. Uh, science of mind, healing and demonstration take place in our mind as our minds become attuned to the truth of being. So if I want to reduce and release my pain, I'm going to go where there is no pain and reveal the truth of, because in the truth of me, there is no pain in the material reality, right? The material reality, which is reality with a capital R. Yes, there is pain. But the truth of me, there is no pain. So all I got to do is create that connection. And it will probably involve other work, i.e. cleaning up my diet and, you know, physical exercise and that kind of stuff. And I am fully on board with that. How do I make that connection? Well, there's multiples of way and I'm not, I'm not going to cut off any of them. So physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, I will use every and any connection I've got. Uh, okay. So that's science of mind, page 57. And then the title came from good for you, which is page 93. There's nothing opposed to God. There is nothing opposed to it's good. Okay. There's nothing opposed to God's good. So the art of spiritual mind treatment rests chiefly upon the use of affirmative statements, but implied in a strong affirmation is an equally strong negation of its opposite. And it's one of the things that Emma will actually use. Emma will actually use the denials. Um, there, one of my favorite stories is when people would come to her and as they're telling their story, she's sitting there in her mind treating going, you are not that you are not that you are not that you are not that. Um, so she is denying the story that they are telling her. She's, she's knowing the truth about them, um, which is not the story that they're telling, uh, in spiritual in spiritual treatment, we begin with the recognition of spirit, God, or truth as the only reality. Because remember, when you're when you're dealing with the steps of treatment, you start with recognition. There is one God. And then the next step is unification. Well, if there's one God, one life, one power, one presence, then I'm a part of that. You are a part of that. We unify with that oneness, which means we unify with that wholeness. We unify with that perfection where whatever it is that we would like to um, let go of doesn't exist. Or if we are working on another objective where it exists fully, even while we are creating it in this reality, the material reality. Okay, so let me find my spot since Rita is helping me read now. Foster actually wasn't too terribly. Okay. Uh, okay. 
So we begin with the recognition of spirit, God, or truth as the only reality. And we remember that we are one with that truth. We then make our spiritual treatment specific by using affirmations. That's where we personalize the treatment. We would also call that the realization stage, um, which leads to a personal realization of the specific, of the healing we seek or of the objective we have in mind. Spiritual treatment should not be seen as an endeavor to overcome something. It's like, we're not trying to overcome something. What we are trying to do, um, or if I want to use it positively, what we are doing, what we are doing is revealing the truth that already exists. We are uncovering. That's why Ernest likes to use the word reveal. Um, to overcome something, but rather as accepting of a good, which is already ours in divine mind. So that's, and that he uses the capital N there. So whatever it is that we seek already exists in the divine mind. What we have to do is accept it and make it real for us in our material existence. It already exists in the divine mind. So since we've been talking about praying, the pain-free version of me exists in the divine mind. What do I need to do to make it real in the material experience that I am having now? Um, outside of accepting it, because <laughs> that's the first step, accepting that there is a version of me that is pain-free. Okay. Um... Therefore, at this stage of our treatment, a good thing to recognize is that there is no power opposed to God. There is nothing that is deliberately trying to stop me from that. There is no power, no personality, nothing. There's no power opposed to God. Uh, we must entertain no subconscious doubts as we accept our good. We must know that nothing opposes it. Really, honestly, we are the only thing getting in our own ways a lot of the times. Now, <laughs> I will I will acknowledge relationship because frequently we when we are in relationship with um, one another, we can get in each other's way that way. Um, so, you know, yeah, I get that. <laughs> uh we, such denials are especially effective when treating pain or fear, and these emotions are often coupled, and that is true. Um, an immediate declaration that there is no pain in the kingdom of God will allow the wholeness of God to express without the blockage of fear. Okay, because frequently people in pain are afraid that it's never going to go away. And so we're looking at a kingdom, we are looking at the kingdom of God going that, well, there's no pain there. If there's no pain there, there's no reason to fear because I have, I have what I need to get there. I just need to listen. And then, and when fear arises, as in the case of an impending confrontation, we need to declare God is here and nothing can harm me. And that's one of the things that we can definitely do when we're walking into a situation is God is always on your side. Now, the truth is, is God is on the other person's side too, <laughs> but God is always with you. And the essential you can never be harmed. The material reality, the material experience of you, yeah, that can be harmed. But the essence of you can't be. And sometimes that's what we have to hold on to because since the essence of you can't be harmed, the material experience of you can be healed. And healing takes many forms. All right, beloveds. So uh, his treatment is there is no delay in divine right action. There is no obstruction in, in divine mind. The answer to my need is right here, right now. I accept it, I believe it, and I proclaim it. God's healing force within me is doing its perfect work. 
and every cell of my body responds, I am not afraid. The positive love of God fills me with light. In this light, I am secure and no harm can approach me. Divine mind knows what I need and divine law brings it about. Wherever I must go today, God gets there first. I am guided, guarded, and loved. I release this treatment with acceptance and thanksgiving. I don't know who Craig Carter is, but he writes pretty incredible treatments. So, um, and you need your claws clipped, lady. Ugh. Okay, so the mission today, should we choose to accept it? And here's my suggestion for you, whatever it is that you are working on, because what, what the, the line that really got my attention today is an immediate declaration that there is no pain in the kingdom of God. Whatever you are working on today, make an immediate declaration about it in the kingdom of God. In my case, I am declaring that there is no pain in the kingdom of God, but perhaps you are working on an objective where you are declaring whatever it is that you are working on, um, i.e., let's go with this one, an immediate declaration of the perfect love in the kingdom of God. Try it. Try it and see how that works for you. Um, and if it works great, you have a new tool in your toolbox, toolbox. And if it's not for you, that's okay. There are plenty of other tools in the toolbox. That's the great thing about a box. It's got more than one tool. So that's the mission today. Give it a try. See how it works for you. Um, and just remember that there is no power that opposes God. There is one power and that is the power of good. All right, beloveds. I am going to move into the process of my day, but I'm going to encourage you, as I always do, to do the spiritual practice of something loving for yourself, something kind for yourself, something compassionate for yourself. Be it three things, be it one thing, be it a big thing, be it a small thing, doesn't matter. Point is, you practice something every day where it is loving, kind, and compassionate. Um, and I'm going to sneeze, so let me not do that. Okay. Um... <laughs> create that habit, create that default setting, create that first response, create that bank of love, kindness, and compassion. So when you meet those people that need a little extra, you have plenty to share and plenty to spare. Um, you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. And it's easier to share from a full cup than an empty one. All right, beloveds. I'm also going to encourage you, as I always do, to do something uh, to do something to engage your mind and your body, to go get that face of bright light early in your day, reset those hormones, um, to and to drink plenty of water. Big believer in drinking hydration, and as the heat picks up, the hydration is more and more and more important. So please, please drink plenty of water. Um, and as always, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around you. Uh, mine is currently sitting in my lap and purring like mad. Because this sound right here, that's what I imagine heaven sounds like. Right? Right? This is my Rita. She's my champion purr. Okay. Um... And you can always take Emma's advice. Look for the good and praise it. And that right there, that's some of my good. Not all of it, but some of it. So take care of yourself. Know that you're loved. Catch us on the social medias. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark, and The Running Rev Ryan. Uh, or that's me. <laughs> the Running Rev Ryan. And... Um, Email info at creativelife.org if you want to know what's going on, because we do have some pretty exciting things coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, the end of May, the beginning of June are kind of packed. So, all right. She's standing on me with that dew claw that needs to be clipped, which is why, and it's distracting. Um, 
Have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, an enchanting day, a magical day. A good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. Because you are enough just as you are. Always. You are a beloved child of God in whom you are, in whom God is well pleased and well represented. So know that Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. Know that I will be back with you at 9 a.m. And know that you are loved. I will see you next time.